Hello and welcome to VMware vCloud Automation Center 6.0, enabling the Advanced Services Designer. My name is Yves Sanford, I'm the CEO of the Comdivision Group, and you can follow me on Twitter at my Twitter handle at Yves Sanford. So let's get started by logging into the system. To enable the Advanced Services Designer, there are a couple of steps you need to follow. First of all, you need to enable a group to become a so-called Services Architect. Without that, that tab doesn't even show up in the system. For that to work, um, as I said, log into the system, switch to the Administration tab, and under Groups, you just either pick an existing group or just select a new group and for that new group you will then specify which specific user is going to be leveraged for that specific scenario. So uh, let's pick domain users. They should become, I know that's not a perfect example, but this is just a demo environment. So our domain users should from now on become all services architects. And you define that, that also gives you an overview on what exactly is going to be leveraged here. And once that is all done, you click on Add, and then you actually need to log out of the system. It will not automatically apply these settings to the overall system. Um, during the session, credentials and permissions within VCAC are only repopulated once you log back into the system. So click Add, you can see it has been populated. Click Log Out and then you can just log in again and you will see there is a new tab called um, Advanced Services within VCAC now. So let's just quickly check that before we head off. Um, to the next steps in the different system. You can see there is between inboxes and administration in UTAP advanced services. We will come back to that one in just a couple of minutes. For now, let's close the browser. Um, we want to make changes to Active Directory and as this is a demo environment or a lab environment, um, mm, the CA for the um, Active Directory domain has not been probably set up, so I'm quickly walking you through just for a demo environment. Clearly for production, you would want to do that differently. Just for a demo environment, how we quickly set up AD to become changeable from VCAC. That might be quite important um, for your demo scenarios for that. We are going to RDP into our domain controller. In our case, uh, that's dc.cap.vdc cdip.net. Yep. Confirm the security warnings and then um, log in with a domain admin or whoever actually can install something onto that specific system. Then we are going to leverage the server manager from Windows 2008 R2 in this case and based on the services manager, we are going to add the specific functionality, which is adding an Active Directory CA um, for that and also the web services. This is necessary because Microsoft changed the behavior of Active Directory or LDAP. Um, up to version um, 2003, I think, you could actually make changes to AD uh, without uh, being enforced to have a CA in place. Um, as of version 2008 R2, we need to have that um, in place. For that, as I said, we need to quickly add the role for that. We are just going to do the basic next, next, next version. Um, not the sophisticated CA system. This is, as I said before, this is just for a demo environment. We warn you to not do the exactly the same in a production environment. You clearly need to do some more sophisticated steps to set that up properly. So select Active Directory Certificate Services as the new role. Hit the Next button. Hit Next. We are sure that we know what we are doing. Beside the CA itself, we also want to have the web enrollment. That's because we are going to leverage that at a later point in time for a different scenario. Just for the LDAP stuff, you wouldn't need that. This is for an enterprise, in our case, um, so hit next, CA type is root CA, we want to have a new private key, we don't have one, key length is fine, we just leave the names the way it is, five years is good, this is just a demo environment, so five years should be good enough. Uh, as we decided to have the web enrollment, we also need to quickly configure the web server, and then finally um, hit the install button, and the system is going to um, quickly install all the necessary components for that. 
Okay, hit close. Um, you might want to run a GP update slash force um, on the domain controller, especially if you have more than one, then you might need to run that. In our case, we are good to go with what we have just done. So now let's get back into VCAC. As I said, or we saw before, we have uh, done the necessary steps so that we can actually access the advanced services designer within VCAC. So now the next step is to make all the necessary configurations. For that, we need to um, define what we call um, specific endpoints um, for EA Active Directory, vCenter Server, and other systems we want to access. Basically, the Advanced Services Designer does nothing else than actually calling VCO workflows on a VCO system. Um, as you might know, the VCAC appliance itself has the necessary components for that um, installed. So we are growing, going under Administration Advanced Services Endpoints, going to define endpoints. Um, first, we start with the Active Directory endpoint. There is one limitation on that one uh, to um, be aware of. Um, there can only be one endpoint for Active Directory defined at the moment. Um, so if you need multiple there, it needs to be a, get a bit more complicated, but you can build something for multiple as well. But per default, out of the box, it can only be one. Um, for that endpoint, we need to define the host name. So that's dc.cap.vdc.cdip.net. The port is going to be 636 as we are going to be uh, SSL based. You need to define the um, l.base. So that's dc.cap.dc.vdc. So that's basically your domain controller l.base. Um, you could also leverage an OU for that. Um, whether we leverage SSL, what will be the default domain for that. Um, and whether we use a shared username for that, in our case, we will leverage administrator for that. Just hit add. The system will now actually check that that endpoint works and kick off a VCO workflow in the backend, which will now make the necessary changes within VCO so that later on you can leverage that specific feature. Next, we are going to add an additional endpoint that is the vCenter server endpoint. Be careful with this one. Normally, you should actually not access machines directly from vCenter server. You should leverage um, the VCAC machine um, parameters. Uh, but there are certain cases and specifics, like um, you can see in some of the presentations from Matthias, where he called, talks about multi CPU systems and stuff like that, where you want to have that differently. So again, specify the host name, specify the port, the path, and whether this one is going to be an enabled one. And then um, beside that, you also need to specify the connection properties. So that's uh, going to be the HTTP port, which is port 80. You still need that. Don't ask me why. Um, the username we are going to leverage to log in and the password for the system. Once all that is entered, hit the Add button and your additional endpoint will be created. So now that we have the endpoints for the Advanced Services Designer specified, we can actually leverage an existing workflow and based on that existing workflow, um, kick off specific procedures from within VCAC in VCO. This has been a long wanted feature. A lot of people were actually demanding that there is a process in place how we could um, leverage blueprints. For that, go to Advanced Services tab. You can see all the workflows defined by VCAC in VCO or by, or by VCO. Um, you can see there are hundreds predefined. We are going to just leverage Active Directory, Org Unit, and um, leverage the one which is there predefined to create an Org Unit. So pick that workflow, hit Next. We will leave the details the same. And then you get something which we call the blueprint form. That is the form which is presented to the user. And we want to make some changes to that one as well. So we want to change some field informations and all that is um, set up. So we don't want to actually ask the user for the OU container. We want to have to make that a bit more speaking and um, the same for the OU name. So for those to be changed, you can also see you can add additional fields if necessary. For those to be um, 
to be changed. You mouse over the specific entry and then you can see at the right hand corner there is that little edit button. And so we are going to um, give this a label. So parent, not print, OU container, hit submit. And we are going to make the same for the OU name and actually call it instead of OU name, just call it name of the new OU container. Hit submit. Hit the next button. We are not going to leverage any provisioned resources. Hit the add button and here we go. We have just created a new uh, service blueprint uh, from within VCO. So, um, uh, from within VCAC, not VCO. The VCO workflow was existing. So you can basically take all your existing VCO workflows and leverage them here. Again, like with other blueprints as well, you need to publish this one before you can actually leverage it. So status is published. You can see that from that green check mark. And now the next step is that we need to entitle that to users, the same as we did with the machine blueprints before. So um, for that, uh, we need to go back to administration um, tab and um, go back into the entitlement and make the necessary changes over there. So in the administration um, catalog management under services, we are going to define a new service or service category that's called Active Directory, as we don't want to mix up these uh, specifics with the um, blueprints we have in the system. So we define first of all the service for this one. Then within that specific service, we are going to specify um, the necessary catalog items. So that will be basically our services blueprint we defined before. And I'll link that back. Um, you can see it here. There is create an organizational unit. Um, and that specific one, we are going to link that back um, to the new category. So you can see there is no service category assigned to that. So click configure on that one. And based on that, you can, once it's configured, you can actually go in there. You could also change the icons and the status and all that kind of stuff. We are good when we just actually change the um, service and define service is going to be Active Directory. Um, hit Update. And our service is defined over here as a catalog items. So the last thing we need to do is actually entitle that specific service to um, any um, user group. So we are again leveraging our development users and edit the existing entitlement we have for that specific group. So we hit the actions button, click edit. and go to the items and approvals tab. And as we can see, um, we can now add the entitlement service, uh, entitled services to the system. We are going to leverage the uh, catalog items first. So we add the specific um, service now to the um, system. So we pick create an organizational unit here from the catalog items list and add that to our system. So once that's done, we um, then also hit the update button. And you can actually see that um, from within the system, when we go to the catalog tab now, we um, have um, our new Active Directory services category in here. And you can also see directly by the VCO law icon, we haven't added that many services yet, that we have the service to create an organizational unit. So let's hit the request button 
and request a specific new org unit. Description is just for the task itself, so we're going to call the task create a test UU. We need a new um, org unit. So this is really the request itself we describe here. It's not actually the stuff we do. Then parent OU, as you start typing, you can see that this is actually um, a drop-down. So this is actively querying the Active Directory. We are going to call the new org unit um, test. And it should be created within VCAC computers. Once we are fine with the settings, we submit that request the same way as we did before with normal blueprints. So just hit the submit button and um, then we can basically go from there. We are then going to also check that the system has actually done what we are asking it to do. So again, hit submit. Hit OK. The request has been sent and that shouldn't take too long. So we can directly go to the uh, domain controller. So hit the start button. Remote desktop connection, leverage the link we had used before. Hit the yes button. And once we are on our domain controller, it will take a couple of seconds to log back into that system again. Again, log in as administrator or whatever else domain admin you have. And then we are going to open the Active Directory admin. So Active Directory uses and computers here. You will see the org unit VCAC computers. And uh, within that org unit VCAC computers, you can then also see that there is a newly created um, a newly created org unit test in there. That's all for the moment. Um, as you can see, it's pretty easy to embed an existing VCO workflow into VCAC. And based on that, you can basically, whatever you can do with VCO, which is nearly everything, can be done with VCAC itself. Um, and it's kicked off from there as well. So again, thank you for watching this video. This was VMware VCAC 6.0, enabling the advanced services designer by Yves Sanford, CEO of the Comdivision Group. Follow me on Twitter at Yves Sanford or drop me an email at y.sanford at comdivision.com. Thanks for watching and keep watching.